City Astro Suite, The Definitive Guide, Part 3, Slots and Masks. Welcome to City Astro. Alright, slots are how City Astro Suite stores its images. A lot of photo editing software maybe uses tabs, um, some uses little windows like a desktop. Uh, this is just the solution I came up with for City Astro Suite. So you have 10 slots available, slots 0 through 9. When you open images, you can open them directly into whichever slot you want. You can just click on a slot and open an image. If you choose to open multiple images at one time, it'll just look for the next available slots to put them in there. And then similar with masks, you have slots for storing your mask images as well. There's five slots for masks. So let's go into using the slots, um, using the masks, and seeing how they work together. I'm just going to go ahead and open an image. So I have an image here open into slot 0. Now this is the active slot. You can see at the bottom it says active slot, slot 0. And now no matter what tab I go to, that's the one that it's going to push into that tab to utilize. If I then select, let's say, slot 2, I can open a different image. Now I have a different image in slot 2. You can see it says active slot, slot 2. That means everything that you select now will be looking at that image in slot 2 for utilizing with the tabs or the functions or, or anything else like that. There's a couple features with slots. You can click this little icon here called copy slot. This is uh, all purpose. You can select a image or mask whatever the slot is. So we could go, let's say slot zero, and we want to put it all the way into like slot six. Just click OK, and it'll make a copy of it for you there. And you can see that there's this blue box around all the slots that currently have something in it. And that's how you can make copies of images. If you want to like maybe downsize one for turning it into a PNG or JPEG or something like that to, to save out. If you right click any of the slots, you can do a show slot preview. And this is just going to be a, a little mini viewer um, for, for the image that's in that particular slot. It allows you to look at multiple images at once then. So we could have multiple slot previews open at one time. Uh, so you can maybe be manipulating one image in the main view here. If you want to be comparing it visually to a couple other slots, it just allows you to do those kind of items. You could also rename slots. And that'll help you uh, remember what's in, what's in that slot. Some functions even put items into slots. So we have an RGB image here in slot zero. If I click the luminance extract function, it's going to say select the slot to store the luminance image. And we're going to go ahead and put that in slot one. You can see that it did pull the named or the renamed slot for us as well. So you, if you do rename slots, a lot of these drop downs will then change to the renamed slot. Um, so let's just go ahead and put the luminance in slot one. It's going to pull up a preview of that slot for us. And then you could also see that it renamed slot one luminance for us. And this is gonna be the same with, with a bunch of different functions. RGB extraction and combination utilizes it. Uh, narrow band to RGB stars, continuum subtraction, image combination. There's a bunch of different things that utilize the, uh, the different slots in order to build up whatever that function is. Moving over to masks. Masks are really powerful, but I'm gonna talk about them here in um, our slot discussion since they do use the slots as well. So masks allow you to manipulate images in specific parts of the image that you want to manipulate it in. When I'm processing, a lot of the time I like grabbing the little mask toolbar and putting it under the mask slots as well so it keeps all the mask stuff together. That's just my personal taste. Um, the C is to create a mask. The plus is to activate the mask. 
and then the minus is to remove the mask from being active. So if you click create mask, you can go fit to preview. You can do something like select the entire image, or if you hold the shift button down, it allows you to draw on the image itself. So you could actually just freehand draw what the mask is you want. Um, and you're not limited to just that one shape, right? You can, you can maybe you want this one here too, or I don't know, kind of a, an object over here. There's various mask types. You have a binary mask, which is just going to be white or black. The white is going to be the affected area. The black is going to be the unaffected area. You have a lightness mask, which is going to extract the luminance of that image for the mask in that area. You have a chrominance mask, which is going to be based on the color data in there. So stuff with a richer color is going to show up brighter on that mask. There's a star mask where it's going to detect stars and mask them out for you. And then I have various um, color masks as well. Red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, and blue. If you need to, let's say you want to just make the red in an area pop, you can circle the area, select red color, and it's just going to create a mask for that red color in that area. So let's go ahead and just, I don't know, I'll select chrominance. And then there's also a blur amount. You don't want your mask to be too sharp. Um, it makes utilizing them with curves and stuff look really artificial. So you're, you're definitely going to want some, some blur amount. Um, in order to make a smooth transition from the edge of the mask to where there's no mask. And then you click preview mask. Now here's, here's our case. This was a chrominance mask. So anything with more color is going to show up brighter. And anything with less color is going to be darker. And you can see it's only affecting those particular regions. Let's say you didn't like that. You didn't want the chrominance mask. Let's go ahead and change it up to a lightness mask. You can click preview and now here's the lightness mask only affecting those portions there. And then to finally save the mask, click save mask and it's going to ask you if you want to push it to a slot or a file. So you can actually store these things as files if you want. I don't know if anybody is. I'm just going to push it to a mask slot. Uh, it's going to go to mask slot zero. And now we have a mask stored in mask slot zero. And you could rename them here too by right clicking. This is my lightness mask. All right, now that we have our image and a mask, now we can see how they're going to play with each other. The easiest way to apply the mask is just left click on the mask. It's going to say the mask is applied and we applied our lightness mask. The other way to apply it is click the little mask plus button and it's going to have a drop down with all the masks that are filled in. We only created the one mask, so you could say, yep, apply that one, and it's going to be the same effect. And then to remove the mask from being active, just click the mask minus button. So let's go ahead and apply the mask and see what it's going to do for us. If we go over to curves, this will be the, the best to actually demonstrate this. Our mask is applied, it says it up there. Now, if we go ahead and really crank on the curves. You could see it's only affecting the masked portion. But let's say you didn't actually want to affect the galaxy. You want it to affect everything else. What you can do is if you right click the mask, preview it, click invert the mask. Now it's inverted. And we just click apply again and now when we go ahead and adjust it you can see now it's adjusting the opposite area of the of the image so this is a way for you to like manipulate maybe the background or in this case you got all this extra colored noise out there maybe you want to select chroma and yank down the the color data in the in the outside of that mask it's really up to you how you want to um, manipulate things when you have a mask applied. Masks also work with pixel math, frequency separation, statistical stretch, image combination. 
just a whole bunch of Halo Be Gone, just a whole bunch of things can be uh, protected and used with masks. So between loading your images in various slots, you can copy them, you could rename them, you can create masks for those images, you can put them in different slots. If you run out of mask slots and you need a new mask, you could just overwrite. I only have five slots in there. Um, but if you did have them all filled up and you, you just wanted a new one, just click create mask. You could overwrite the mask in there. That's it's not a problem. And just always remember, you'll get this big banner if a mask is applied. Be sure to turn that off before you do other things like, I don't know, tweaking your curves or something. Otherwise, you're just still being affected the, the mask area. So now that we know how to load images into slots, copy slots across, rename them, create masks to protect different parts of our images, in the next video, we'll be able to go into all the different functions and all the different tabs and really start getting into the meat and potatoes of uh, SETI Astro Suite. Please comment, like, and subscribe.